Let's start by generating a few cosine ratios. That's going to put the ka on Sokatoa. And we know what that stands for. We said it in class. C-A-H, cosine of an angle, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. It's that ratio. So we're starting this exercise with the size of a triangle, 8, 15, 17. You remember that Pythagorean triple. And let's start with the green angle, the X. Well, I can see that from here, the 17 is clearly the hypotenuse. With respect to this angle, that is the X, the adjacent, this side, would be, of course, the 15. So if it's the 15, then the cosine of X is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now all you've got to do is pull out your handy-dandy calculator and really the old four-banger, this one can do it, 15 divided by 17. That's all there is to it. And there's a decimal. Of course it's going to be less than one. Sine and cosine, as we mentioned in class, must be. Let's take the first four digits. 0.8823. Oops, we better round that up. 0.8824. This, well, let's see if I got that right. There we go. So that's going to be the cosine of x in this example. Now, looking at y, it's still the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. Hypotenuse hasn't changed, but the, this is the adjacent side. It's adjacent to the purple angle, or y. So I guess my ratio is going to be 17 again. That's going to be 8. 17. Now that makes sense. And let's pull out our calculator. Well, I think you can do this. And you do the arithmetic, and you're going to come up with a smaller decimal. Take it to four decimal places. After all, that's what we would do in the trig tables. Well, that was so much fun. We're going to do it again. Okay, again with the, well, the green angle, the X, and the purple, the Y. So we know Again, the hypotenuse. This side is the hypotenuse right here, the 26. Can't change that. That's always the hypotenuse. For the green angle, the adjacent is going to be the 13. So it looks like the cosine is going to be 13 over 26. Now, don't even reach for that calculator. You should know that that is a half. And taking it to four decimal places, as our trig tables would do, I'll write it this way. And of course, switching this all around, going for our good friend, the purple angle over here. Again, the adjacent side is now 13 radical 3. It's going to be 13 radical 3 over that 26. Now this will take some calculating. Now I'll pull up my handy dandy calculator. See, we used this one last time. Need an upgrade now. Because I've got 13 radical 3. Uh, you can write forward here, 13 times, here's 3, that's the radical, which of course means um, radical 3, the equal sign, that's 13 times radical 3. I divide by 26, and there I go. A good mental check, it's a number less than 1, just look at the picture. It's a little more than halfway to 1, it's greater than a half, less than 1. So let's put that down over there. And there you go. Um, but you know, we're going to do one more thing. Okay, just thought I'd show you this. Well, I've got this in here. You may have seen these buttons. You see, um, I'm going to go to the inverse button. Cosine to the negative 1. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. This is next chapter, really, or next section. If I take the inverse cosine, I'm really saying, what angle would give me a cosine? of 0 0.8660, etc. So I hit the cosine to the minus one. Ah, 30. So this purple angle must be 30. Could we do that for a half? Sure. Let's clear this. Let's put in 0.5 inverse cosine. Ah, a little rounding error, but it's, you see it's 60. And of course it is, because just look at the ratio. The sides are in the ratio 1, 2, radical 3. A 30 
60-90 triangle. Well, let's keep this trig momentum going. We're going to use this right triangle here with a 43 degree angle and a known hypotenuse to solve for these two unknown legs. Using our trig tables, we'll use the calculator in the future exercises, but you gotta learn to use the tables too. So here we go. Um, first off, relative to this 43 degree angle, this is, well, this is the, well, it's always the hypotenuse. This is going to be the adjacent side, and this is the opposite side. So we need to know those relationships because this acronym SOCATOA, which you've seen before, if not in my class, and someone else's, well, this stands for sine of this angle, opposite over hypotenuse, SOH. The CAH, cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So those are the ratios we need. Let's do the setups for this angle, 43 degrees at A in both cases. The cosine the adjacent over hypotenuse, r over 26, the sine of 43 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, s over 26. I like this. We do two at once. Let's multiply both sides of both equations by 26. So now r is equal to 26 times cosine of 43, s is 26 times the sine of 43. I think it's time to look at those trig tables. There's the trig tables. Mm, let's read down until we find 43. Aha, I see. 0 0.6820, 0 0.7314. For, and that would be for sine and cosine respectively. Let's go back over here. I just got these right from the table. Now we can pull out a regular calculator. We don't need a fancy calculator. Let's we'll say 26 times 0.7314. Yeah, looks like 19 to me. 19 and no tenths. Round it to the nearest, round it to the nearest tenth. And now let's do one more. We'll do one more here. Let's clear that one out. And we'll say 26 times 0.6820. And that's 17.7 to the nearest tenth. And that is it. So, oops, so we can see we've got 19 and 17.7. Well, this time we're going to use our trig calculators. Same thing though, I've got a given angle here, and I've got a known side at the hypotenuse. And I've got two unknown sides, the two legs. So this way we get to use our trig identities again, both the sine and the cosine. Ready? All right, let's go. Oh, first off, let's label. Remember, hypotenuse. Relative to this angle, this would be the adjacent side, and this would be, P would be the opposite side. So we can set them up really quickly, just like that. Sine of 64 is opposite P over hypotenuse, 34. Easy enough, whereas cosine of 64 is adjacent, Q over hypotenuse, 34. So you get your P's and Q's in order here. We'll just, um, next step, multiply both sides of the equation by 34 in both cases. And what I'm going to flip symmet using symmetric property left to right, putting my variable on the left. Now it's calculator time. Where's that calculator? This will not do. We need the upgrade. So we'll first calculate the sine right here, or sorry, the P. I'm going to go forward here. This calculator allows me to register 34 times. Notice it's keeping this, keeping a notation here. 64, I'm in degree mode. I now hit sine. That number looks feasible for the sine of 64. Notice this multiplication sign still there. Equals, that gives me the product, 30.6 roughly. So we'll put that down there. Now, let's go back to the calculator for Q. 
do it a little bit differently here. Let's put the 64 in here, noting I'm in degree mode, and I'm going to hit the cosine. That ratio, you know, look at the picture, you know, a little less than half. So that's the cosine ratio. I'll multiply that times my 34. This is the way most of you probably do it. Hit the equals. There you go. 14 and 9 tenths. And by golly, oops, we are done. Oh, wrong button. There we go. 14 and 9 tenths. We're finished. Now let's see if we can find, well, the sine and cosine of this angle, 45 degree angle. Got a diagram right here. And with this diagram, we know there's the hypotenuse. We know that's the adjacent side, and we know this is the opposite side. Opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Sokotoa. So now, let's see what those ratios are all about. Oh yeah, yeah. Move this out of the way a little. 1, 1, radical 2. So the sine of 45, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Let me grab one of those 1's. Opposite over hypotenuse and you know that's bad form so we rationalize it and it's doing like that and there you go because oops skip a step we multiplied by radical 2 over radical 2 that's how we got there now let's go for cosine of 45 well cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse well this side is still 1 and the hypotenuse is still radical 2. And I'm still going to rationalize. And I end up with that. Now, to be honest, you really didn't have to rationalize at all if you were going to produce a decimal. But just for old time's sake, we'll do it this way. We'll do it both ways. 1 divided by, there's 2, there's the radical 2, and there's my decimal. Or doing it properly, I'll take the square root of 2 divided by 2. And there you go, 0 0.7071. And that would be your equivalent. Well, here we go, Sokotoa. We need to know which one we need to use. Remember, in this diagram, I got my angle over here. I know that this side is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, this is the hypotenuse. I know the opposite. I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. I guess I don't care about the adjacent. So what does that tell you? Look at these two. Which one do we want? Certainly don't want this one. We need sine, the opposite over the hypotenuse. So let's see if we can set that up. It's going to look a lot like this. Sine is going to be 11 over x. Sine of 53, that is. Now, let's do my substitution. Or, sorry, my algebra. I'm going to rearrange this. x is equal to 11 over the sine of 53. We talked about that in the last video. Remember, we can switch these two around. If you don't like that, you're multiplying both sides by x, dividing both sides by sine of 53. Now it's time. Well, we could use the trig table. If we did, we would find this decimal in the trig table. But maybe we're not using the trig table. Maybe we're going to go directly to the calculator. Let's do that. Well, we use this calculator with the trig table. We're going to need to spend another few dollars and get this calculator. Hmm. So I've got 11 divided by, I'm going back over here, sine of 53. So I'm going to say 53, it's in degree mode, sine. So that registers the sine of 53 equals, and I see to the nearest tenth, that looks like 13 and 8 tenths. So round it up there. There you go. All done.